Worried about how your investments are doing right now? Today, we'll look at how to do a portfolio review so that you'll not only feel less stress, but take productive steps to help you invest better. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. If you've been following the news, especially finances, it can be pretty scary right now. It seems like all the headlines are focused on high gas prices, how inflation is affecting basic goods, and how volatile the market is right now. We're in a bear market, which if you're not familiar with the term, means that there's been a decline of 20% or more from recent highs. While staying on top of the big threads of what's going on is good, being too tuned in to the news can backfire. Look, I've been writing about personal finance for almost a decade and a half, and I can still get a bit anxious about it. This is where doing a portfolio review can help. When we're doing our monthly reviews for our money dates, we get a snapshot of what's going on with our accounts to make sure everything's moving along well. But a few times a year, around once a quarter for us, we'll also look at our investments more closely. It's like a financial checkup that's beneficial for our finances for sure, but believe it or not, our marriage. For us, this is an opportunity to hit pause, just sit down and really talk about what's been working and what's not working with our family finances. We can also take a step back and discuss the big picture about what we want to do in the near future and then long term. It's a low-key but productive way for us to stay on top of things, and I want to show you how you can do it too. In this episode, we'll dive into why less is more when it comes to portfolio reviews, what questions to ask to make sure you're on track, and things you can do to improve your portfolio. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's start off with the good news. You don't have to constantly check and hover over your portfolio to successfully invest. In fact, according to the data, you're more likely to do better with less frequent reviews. Why? Because human nature tends to push us in the direction of tweaking and fiddling around with buying and selling our investments. It makes us feel better because we're doing something, but it can actually hurt our portfolio's performance. Instead, checking it less, whether it's quarterly, twice a year, or even once a year, may be a smarter money move. Especially if you have an investment plan in place, and you've automated your contributions. When I say investment plan and strategy, you might be thinking of something complicated. And yes, I do know some people who have very complicated rules to their investment plan, but it doesn't have to be that way. An investment plan simply is that. It's a plan on how you want to allocate your investments. What you're trying to do is reach your goal and minimize risk. So there's different goals that you can have based on your timeline. If retirement is further away, you can be more aggressive about growth. But if you're a few years out from retirement, you might be more interested in preserving what you have. Now, there are a ton of different ways that you can invest, and there's so many different models out there. I'll share a few of my favorites in the show notes, such as David Swenson or J.L. Collins. But the idea behind many of these is that you're diversifying your investments across different sectors and different types of investments. We're talking about mixing up equities, you have real estate, bonds, and the percentages do vary based on the model you're using, but you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Because year to year, if you look at returns, certain sectors are superstars and they do great while others lose money. But by having it spread across different ones, you can use index funds for this, you're minimizing that risk while still seeing some long-term growth. 
If you're unsure about which investment plan or strategy will fit you, this is where I really think you need to take the time to research. I'll share a few of the books I've read and enjoyed and found extremely helpful when we created our own plan in the show notes. This is also an opportunity to meet with a CPF, a certified financial planner, who can sit down and tailor a financial plan, including your investments, that fits your goals and timelines. With a certified financial planner, what's beneficial about them is you do pay a fee, but they are going to be acting as a fiduciary. And what that means is they are legally required to act in your best interest. They're not a salesperson. There's someone that will look at your options and will give you advice that is beneficial to you. So if you are going to go that route, do ask them, are you going to act as a fiduciary? All right, so let's talk a little bit about reviewing your portfolio across the different accounts. And there's three basic things that we look at when we're reviewing our investments. First of all, we have the numbers in front of us. We want to see how are they doing performance-wise for the year, five years, 10 years, and so forth. We are also considering the expenses and fees. Next, we're asking, are we on track for our timeline and the amount that we're going towards? And then finally, do we need to adjust or reallocate our investments to put it closer towards our investment plan and strategy? Basically, that's it. We're looking at each of our different accounts and we're reviewing the numbers and asking those two questions. Our investments are essentially spread over three types of accounts. We have the 401k, IRAs, and a brokerage account. With the 401k and IRAs, because they are geared towards retirement, we're looking at a timeline further in the future, so we're more aggressive with our investments. Our brokerage account, however, has a slightly different goal. So after we've paid off all our non-mortgage debt and we built up the savings and made sure we've been regularly contributing towards retirement, we finally hit that mark of Coast Fi. So now we're considering having more options or flexibility with careers and get into volunteering more. To cover this transition period between now and when we can, quote, traditionally retire, we're building up that fund with the brokerage account. A lot of it is in index funds, but we're a little less aggressive and more focused on dividends. What's important when you're doing the portfolio review to remember what's the purpose of these accounts. How are we planning on using this? When are we planning on using it as well? When I was looking at the charts, looking at the performance, when you see year to date, it could be a bit discouraging, especially this year. But if you pull out the window to five years, 10 years, a lot of times you'll see that you've made a lot of progress in that time period. Taking a step back, looking at the big picture can help give you that perspective and reduce a lot of the stress. Depending on your situation, there may be a reason for you to change things up with your portfolio. Some of the more common reasons I've noticed is that better investment options are available. So with your employer in the 401k, they may change providers or even the provider starts offering more investments While the amount of different investments might not matter to you, sometimes within that space, there's some low-cost, very well-performing index funds. With index funds, you benefit in a few ways in that you get that diversified investment with one thing. You can put your money in that index fund. For example, if it's tracking the S&P 500, and you get lower costs than an actively managed fund. So that's something to look into if you see that there's an investment that is a better fit for your goals and that can help you diversify. Another thing I've noticed with families is they just have so many different accounts through the years. It can be quite a chore to check out all the accounts, log into everything. That's why I believe it's great to have kind of a dashboard for all your finances, whether you use a tool like Personal Capital, Tiller, Mint, however you want to do it, where you could at least see the balance regularly, then also consider consolidating your accounts where it made sense. You can use a service like our partner Capitalize, 
where you move your old 401ks over to a rollover IRA. What I love about having the money in an IRA is that you can have many more options. You have control over the different investments that are available to you. Finally, you may discover that you're not happy with your investment plan and strategy. Maybe it doesn't align with your goals, your timeline, or you discover, for example, in this market, you just aren't as risk tolerant as you thought you were. So you might want something that's a little more conservative when it comes to investments. Any of these cases, I would suggest talking with someone more experienced, preferably someone like a certified financial planner, to make sure that you're making a decision that's objective and makes sense for you. I want you to feel comfortable with your family's financial goals and plans to get there, and that includes your investments. If you're like us, you probably have quite a number of accounts between the two of you, including your old 401ks. It can be difficult to stay on top of everything, especially when your old employer switches providers, which is what happened with my husband. Here's where our sponsor Capitalize can help. Capitalize helps you find and roll over an old 401k into an IRA of your choice for free. They handle the entire process. And yes, that includes calling your old employer or the 401k provider on your behalf. If you're ready to make managing your old 401ks much easier, find out more at simplifyandenjoy.com slash capitalize. Before we wrap up, I want to focus on a few key takeaways I picked up while preparing for this episode. The first is, if you haven't already, make sure you have on paper or digital form a written plan for your investments along with your goals. This is going to help you when you do your portfolio reviews because you have something objective to measure against. And you can do this yourselves when you're periodically, maybe by the quarter or mid-year doing those checkups, or if you're meeting with a financial planner, having something that you could look at and say, am I meeting that standard? Am I moving closer to my goals? Gives you a better way to measure your progress and see what you need to do to improve and adjust. The second takeaway is don't forget to look at the big picture. And I'm talking on both sides. I'm talking about the progress that you're making yourself with what's going on around you and the situation. But then also when you're talking about investments, just remember while year to year things may be volatile, historically the stock market has been increasing. I completely understand that it can be unnerving and a bit scary when you're following the headlines daily about how the stock market is doing. But arming yourself with information and seeing the numbers long term can give you a bit of perspective and help you stay focused on your plan. Finally, focus on what you can do productively now. You may discover during your investment portfolio review that there are certain things that you can adjust that would align your investments closer to your plan and goals. For example, your current employer may have better offerings in their 401ks for investments. So moving your money to those may make more sense. On the other hand, if you have older 401ks with previous employers that you're having a hard time tracking, you may find that it would be much easier to take all of them and roll them into a IRA. Our partners at Capitalize can help you out with that. They can walk you through step by step, including taking care of some of the paperwork, finding where those 401ks are now, and making sure that the process goes smoothly. So definitely check it out. It's free and it's one less thing for you to stress over. I know with everything going on in the news, it can sometimes feel better just to vent or maybe get some encouragement or questions. So don't forget, we have a free and private Facebook group called Thriving Families, where we swap ideas, stories, and encouragement as we're working towards our family and financial goals. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash FB. We'd love to see you there. 
I hope this episode makes things easier for you when it comes to reviewing your portfolio and making adjustments as needed. As always, I'll include links to the resources we mentioned today, plus more tools that can help make managing your investments much easier over in the show notes at Simplify and Enjoy. In two weeks, we're going to be wrapping up this run of episodes with another listener mailbag. So you still have plenty of time to send those in. I'll have links in the show notes where you can either leave a voice message or if you want to be anonymous and send in your question, I have a form there too. Next week on the podcast, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. These past six months, I've been running a money experiment and I want to share the results with you. If you're curious about what it is and want to get a sneak peek, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash listen. I love chatting with you and the newsletter is the best way to stay up to date and get previews like this about things that are coming up on the show and site. Our music today came from Staircases and by various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, I want to say thank you, not just for listening, but for being a part of the community. Every tweet, review, and post you share gets the word out so more families can simplify things and enjoy what truly matters. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.